Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India This class, uh, I will cover a big topic, so, so I should say large topic, uh, synthesis of bicyclic polyheteroatomic heterocyclic. It is a vast area uh, or vast uh, sub area I should say. And uh, in this topic, I have selected only few uh, important nuclei, uh, namely uh, one is uh, uh, indazole. Then uh, other could be uh, sinolins, sinolins. Then third one is well known to many of you, uh, is known as purines. And the fourth one uh, is known as uh, pteridines. So I have selected only four of them uh, under the category of bicyclic polyheteroatomic heterocycles. And before we start, I think we should be able to uh, uh, know the structures. Uh, the, the first one as, as named says, it has to be a 6 member and a 5 member. And just like indole, so we can say a 2 as a indole. So, this is indole. Sinolins also are very similar to indazoles, but the second ring uh, is a 6 member ring and all of you know purine uh, consists of uh, a 5 member ring and a 6 member ring. 5 member ring uh, is uh, fused with a 6 member ring and 5 member ring uh, is imidazole and then the other one is uh, pyrimidine. So, this is an important nucleus all of us know and then uh, next most important uh, is uh, again a 6 member fused with a 6 member, but in this case you have a pyrimidine ring system and then um, uh, you have 2 nitrogens on this side. And uh, this is, so this is actually uh, pyridines, this is pyridines, uh, the, uh, this, uh, this is actually sinolines and this is indazoles. And some of you probably also uh, know a kind of a nucleus uh, which is pretty uh, fam familiar in uh, organic chemistry. Uh, it is a, a six member again, a six member um, with uh, pyrimidine nucleus, uh, ketone up here and an NH2. Okay. And this nucleus also is uh, commonly encountered in heterocyclic chemistry. This is known as terine. terine. So, you have to know all these things. Okay. These are very important nuclei. Uh, I mean most of them either biologically active or they are found somewhere in, in the pharmaceutical uh, formulations. And of course, uh, they are of continued research means uh, there are potential applications of all these nuclei. Uh, as we will go, we will see and, uh, and uh, among these heterocycles, I think the uh, third or fourth one also is important in terms of the nomenclatures, the numbering systems. I do not know how, how many of you know the numbering system. Uh, in case of purine, uh, the numbering starts from uh, a particular nitrogen. Unlike the conventional IUPAC uh, numbering, these two systems will have a different kinds of numbering. They do not belong to these IUPAC rules okay. and uh, that, that is uh, because of the historical reasons. Uh, like say, I mean why naphthalene is naphthalene? It could have been benzo-benzene or something like that. But historically 
it has been named as naphthalene and that name has been retained by IPL. So, uh, similarly, purine nucleus, all of us know uh, many of the nucleic bases of uh, nucleic acid bases would have this sort of nucleus and the numbering starts from pyrimidine nitrogen, pyrimidine nitrogen. Then we six member one, one and then it goes to two and three, then this one five, uh, uh, sorry four, five, six and then uh, third nitrogen is seventh, eight and nine. Okay. So, this is the uh, uh, you have to remember nothing can be done and then uh, let us go to the other one, mm, other one is what pteridine, pteridine also is a very important nucleus so as you will go you will see and um, uh, in fact uh, uh, very briefly I can say uh, pteridine is found in uh, anybody knows pteridine, pteridine is found in this uh, wings of the butterflies. So, this is the coloring material actually it is pigment is due to this uh, the pyridine nucleus okay. and uh, uh, it is uh, in this case the numbering starts from here this, this nitrogen. I mean there is no logic, but uh, again uh, it has been retained and it has been accepted. So, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 right. So, this should be 5 and this nitrogen is not numbered though. So, uh, actually this carbon is numbered. So, then the 6, 7 and this. So, this is how the numbering goes and, um, and this nucleus is also pretty important uh, because of uh, many important uh, occurrence. For example, um, uh, it is found in metho, uh, it is found in uh, metho trexate, metho trexate. Uh, methotrexate is nothing but it is a commercially available anti cancer drug, anti cancer drug. So, likewise, also it is all found in modibulinum cofactor, which is a pretty important enzyme. Uh, so, that is there. Like say, uh, pteridine, for example, pteridine, uh, uh, sorry, pterine. Pterine, where do you find pterine? Pterine actually is uh, found in spinach. Uh, spinach is nothing but uh, what is, uh, any kind of palm, fine. Okay. I, I should not say palm, any kind of okay. So, but uh, there are that means that they, they are uh, important. As you will see, you will have more examples. Then also some chemical behavior also peculiar. For example, uh, uh, this uh, pteridine, pteridine is soluble in pentane or hexane, as well as water. Normally, those molecules which are soluble in organic solvent are not soluble in uh, inorganic solvent, etc. But uh, but in this case, it is uh, you know, that is true. Okay, um, let us um, uh, look at um, some of the synthetic aspects of, uh, let us say, uh, indazoles. Uh, indazoles. Uh, uh, I mean, there are, of course, uh, hypothetically, one can write so many uh, methods, so many uh, approaches. But um, what the known approaches, all of them would start from they start from uh, disubstituted disubstituted benzene disubstituted benzene derivatives all of them okay and there are about six or seven methods but uh, today we will talk about only um, two of them or rather th maybe uh, three of them uh, one of these ways to uh, one of these ways uh, uh, is to uh, start from uh, isatine, I think all of us know now. Isatine is a uh, isatine is an indole kind of uh, nucleus with uh, two keto groups, one amide and this thing. Uh, you can start from there. The other that is also pretty popular. Uh, it's pretty interesting too. Also, uh, it starts from um, orthotoluidine kind of thing. Orthotoluidine. So this is another way. And third approach again quite interesting. Uh, this is very interesting in the sense because this uh, sort of topic is uh, 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 quite uh, useful. Uh, so, this is uh, I think uh, by looking at the structure uh, you can see that um, there is a uh, uh, when I write this the number uh, the right one uh, it something uh, should come to your mind what is it any idea. Uh, okay. So, but any case all the three will have let us say I mean sort of a uh, disubstituted benzene type of compounds. Uh, likewise, the, I mean so you can think about anything for example, um, you can think about uh, corresponding um, let us say hy hydrazone 
uh, and then uh, do something uh, to get to the uh, compounds. Uh, then you can also have nitro benzaldehyde, ni ortho nitro benzaldehyde. So, like this, you can think about this, but all of them uh, involve the 1 2 disubstituted compounds. Okay. And um, actually, third one is important uh, as I said, uh, it is a precursor of benzene. Benzene, if you use uh, let us say cesium fluoride or potassium fluoride or uh, tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride, uh, it first uh, the fluoride attacks the TMS group and then it induces the loss of uh, triflet. So, it is a nice uh, important precursor at the room temperature. So, as we will see how to make uh, use of it in the synthesis of indazoles. Okay. The one that is uh, mechanistically important uh, is uh, the middle one, this is the second one. What you will see uh, if uh, a toluidine kind of molecule um, uh, is uh, treated with um, sodium nitrite, sodium nitrite in presence of uh, in presence of acetic acid. So, acetic acid is basically solvent. So, one would expect the expectation is pretty uh, obvious right and uh, so, you will have a digenium kind of salt digenium salt, but this digenium salt is, does not exist in that way. Uh, it is interestingly uh, cyclizes to as if it forms a uh, uh, negative charge here and then uh, attacks the uh, diazo uh, group and so you will have attacks the diazo group. So, you will have uh, um, obviously this kind of uh, intermediate and that eventually uh, tautomerizes to uh, tautomerizes to the indazole. So, this is quite interesting that means a diazo compound which uh, is not believed to be, uh, uh, participate in intramolecular reaction, this is an intramolecular reaction of the uh, diazo compound. Okay. Uh, likewise, uh, just uh, one more example probably I can give you, uh, just one, one step you can uh, get to this in, in, indazole derivative. Uh, for example, uh, you begin with again it is uh, orthotoluidin that means you will have to have a substituent here and uh, I think now so it is pretty similar on the only thing in this case NH is protected as oh, sorry uh, AC and then uh, to carry out the reaction all of you know uh, what is the substitute of sodium nitrite in organic solvent substitute of sodium nitrite that means nitrosetting reagent in organic solvent all of you know you have studied in BSc. Uh, one of them is amyl nitrate, amyl nitrate, sorry, amyl nitrite, amyl nitrite. Other one is butyl nitrate. So, starch, uh, in this case, it is the, the one you have uh, uh, shown here, it is tertiary butyl nitrite. Okay. It is a basically source of NO. Plus. So, it is equivalent to uh, the, yes. and uh, in this case, it is a uh, solvent I have missed, but the temperature required is around 90 degree centigrade and uh, as uh, in analogy the previous example uh, one can uh, write this uh, structure here is an N acetyl um, in the zole and of course E1 all of us know E1 stands for uh, this methyl ester right in our case. So, like this uh, you can uh, I mean nicely uh, get an access to these in the derivatives. Okay, the second method that uh, I would like to uh, talk about uh, I think uh, the one example is good enough to demonstrate the utility of uh, isotene right. Uh, if you recall in, in the last in uh, one of the last classes uh, we have talked about the use of isotene in the synthesis of anybody remembers isotene is a very useful compound actually there are so many multipurpose uses of isotene uh, uh, isotene isotenes and uh, in one of the classes we have talked about uh, actually it is uh, used uh, in the synthesis of quinoline, uh, the structure demands is quinoline, so quinoline synthesis. In this case um, if you uh, treat with um, paratoluene sulfonic acid uh, and uh, uh, methyl format, uh, methyl format uh, so I think all of us know what is the answer, uh, what is the answer uh, it would because there are two kinds of uh, which are ketones, one is amide, other is the uh, just uh, ketones. So, it will undergo ketalization, right? It will undergo the ketalization. 
the next thing the next thing uh, that is done is uh, sodium hydride and then one new reagent is used that is called DPPONH2 DPPONH2 what is it uh, it is uh, nothing but it is nothing but it is a source of this is equivalent to you can say uh, NH2 plus like NH2Cl NH2Cl so similarly this is equivalent to NH2 plus. So, you can guess uh, uh, what is the uh, impossible reaction the, there is only one abstractable hydrogen which is sitting at nitrogen. So, this would aminate this nitrogen and you will have um, the skittle as it is and by the way you have to remember the structures also of this one uh, DPP NH2 is nothing but it is a phosphenyl hydroxylamine. So, that means it has to be like this and uh, so diphenyl so that uh, the, uh, I think uh, the, as the name says uh, it should be diphenyl right diphenyl phos uh, and third uh, uh, alphabet is phosphenyl and this is O and hydroxyl I mean this is the structure. So, when a nucleophile attacks uh, a nucleophile attacks this nitrogen and uh, this uh, diphenyl phosphonate group is coming out as the living group it is a pretty useful one. Uh, what is the next reaction? The next reaction so one would expect is just if you boil with uh, dilute sulfuric acid uh, in this one uh, you can get a nice uh, kind of uh, rearrangement nice kind of rearrangement and uh, eventually uh, it will give you this indazole with a carboxylic acid at the uh, Three position, carboxylic acid is three position. Okay, uh, uh, I do not have to explain to you, right? Sorry, uh, the hydrogen is up here. I do not have to explain. Uh, actually, under the uh, acidic conditions, uh, it undergoes uh, it undergoes uh, what uh, hydrolysis, right? So uh, hydrolysis would give you NH and N, uh, basically phenyl hydrazine and a keto here and a carboxylic acid. So, just uh, the hydrolysis of the ketal and hydrolysis of the amide that will give you the and then uh, this one would undergo cyclizations to this. So, this is a nice uh, I mean this is a clean kind of uh, synthesis. Uh, uh, let me give you uh, there are other kinds uh, just uh, in this context uh, let me just uh, uh, quickly uh, let you know an interesting reaction. I do not know whether, whether you should be, you should be able to predict the product of this reaction. Let us say indole all of us know is a famous nucleus. Then uh, this uh, sodium nitrite also is a famous uh, reagent right famous reagent. So, uh, in the presence of acid you get a new compound. So, what could be the structure? Nitrous is fine, then what? NO plus, ok. So, uh, presumably uh, it will, uh, I mean, uh, it, it can indoor or first no, it can undergo nitrous at the 3 position or nitrogen. There are two possibilities, but with nitric acid, it is a hard one. So, uh, you can expect a N nitrous right. And then, uh, then what? See, uh, you have uh, actually I, I should have written here dilute acid. So that means you have water in it, water in it. So if you actually enamine, if you hydrolyze enamine, uh, enamine, uh, indole means basically enamine, right? If you hydrolyze, what you are expected uh, to get? Uh, it is N H here N, N O and in this case what you will be getting here aldehyde. Enamine means hydrolysis uh, would give you the corresponding starting metal in um, the corresponding secondary amine and the aldehyde or ketone. Now, uh, you can guess uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the previous example in, uh, in the compound with the, um, the uh, previous example means uh, in, uh, in last slide we have shown that orthotoluidine if you treat with sodium nitrite it gives you the indazole. So, you have uh, the, 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 with an ester 
ester group there you can end up with an ester pyrazole and uh, indazole. So, he, he, this would immediately cyclize, cyclize to uh, uh, it will cyclize to uh, indazole here um, and then. So, uh, basically you will get the 3 formyl indazole just like uh, the previous example when you see this uh, so, uh, toluidine treated with sodium nitrite it gives the indazole. Okay. Uh, so, uh, then uh, let us uh, look at uh, one uh, more reaction I think that would suffice uh, for the synthesis of um, indazole like say if you uh, this is uh, the benzene root I think uh, the, that, that is the way uh, it should be known benzyl root. If you uh, treat with uh, fluorobenzene uh, with TMS diazomethane. TMS diazomethane basically is a substitute of the diazomethane and then uh, L um, T M P L T M P in uh, ether and a, a reflux ether reflux means basically 35 degree centigrade and in one step uh, you will be getting uh, this indazole derivative. So, uh, indazole derivative and here uh, TMS is so TMS indazole. By the way, recently I have come across a patent actually describing indazoles for the use of uh, treatment of diabetics. Okay, that means, uh, they are pretty useful. Um, now, I think uh, all of you know uh, what does uh, LTMP stands for? Uh, uh, we talked about that in fourth year. Uh, lithium tetramethyl piperidide like uh, LDA uh, lithi uh, LDA lithium diisopropyl amide ID so piperidide. Okay. So, uh, it is uh, basically a base um, uh, hindered base with uh, this. Uh, what is the mechanism? Mechanism is uh, it goes to it goes to benzene here and then in the presence of uh, the strong base you get the lithium and this uh, diazonium salt here uh, this is diazo compound right uh, this is uh, TMS uh, TMS. So, one can uh, think about this electron movement to benzene as an electron acceptor and this is neutralized and then you have one hydrogen up here. and uh, so, it will now uh, the form this nucleus sorry, double bond and then uh, TMS and in the presence of the excess base it will form this I mean, I mean uh, this negative charge here and then negative charge of course, isomerizes to uh, upon workup will give you this. Okay. So, I mean this is a uh, fairly ok method. Uh, but in the next example what I will see uh, rather uh, the most popular benzene precursor these days most popular benzene precursor. Uh, what I have said before the most popular one is the TMS here and O triflate. What does it do? Uh, if you uh, treat with a, a fluoride reagent. So, uh, fluoride goes to TMS and then um, uh, trifluoride comes out. So, eventually you will be getting this um, uh, so sort of a neutral or uh, the basic conditions uh, benzene formation. Now, if you uh, treat this with uh, let us say R uh, CH N 2 I mean apparently I mean unless you know I mean you cannot think of this individual formation. Uh, so, like the previous example here under this under the, under the condition uh, you will be getting this uh, individual formation. Mm, with NH here double bond and R and this is a pretty fairly general method, but the, uh, the only condition that you have this, but it is condition, condition sensitive. Condition sensitive means this is obtained uh, if you have uh, this potassium fluoride and of course, uh, 18 C 6 uh, crown ether 18 C 6 crown ether. So, if you use then you will get this. Okay. But, um, if you have a, a different kind the same kind of substrate, but the reagent is little different 
uh, this is cesium fluoride, cesium fluoride and which is uh, which supposed to generate more nucleophilic carbon ion, more nucleophilic carbon ion and the other condition is methyl cyanide that is acetonitrile and room temperature, room temperature what do you expect uh, you will expect a very similar compound, uh, but uh, uh, not exactly the one we have uh, seen on the, on the, uh, we have been seeing in the right hand side. And so, uh, in guess uh, since we have been talking about these indazoles, we will be getting the indazoles here and R will be R and this N will be linked with something else. This is one of the serious byproducts in the reactions okay. or you can in fact, you can get as the major product provided you monitor the reaction or rather standardly optimize the reaction. Okay. And um, what could be the byproduct? Guess just basically uh, if you have little mechanistic uh, approach, you can quickly come up with the uh, byproduct you will be getting here. Nitrogen would be uh, linked to a group. What could be? Phenyl. That means, that means at the end you will have a nitrogen minus here that minus will add to another benzene nucleus okay. that is how it will uh, work. And uh, uh, let us uh, go to the next one, next one is uh, sinoline right, sinolines what is it? Uh, it is uh, very similar to indazoles, but uh, this second ring is a six member ring with this. I think uh, before that I should also tell you some of the other uh, analogous nucleus. For example, um, did I, uh, I do not know whether if I have told you or not, uh, there is a nucleus for example like this, there are uh, like this, there is a nucleus uh, which will be looking like uh, this, there is a nucleus uh, which will, that means all these are basically diatomic bicyclic in compounds and this. So, that means, uh, right, how many of you can recognize these three nuclei by name They're on the right hand side? Sinolyl, you see, uh, it is 1 to nitrogen. Okay. Any guess? Uh, this is an important nucleus again. Thalazine. Why? because most of the thalic acid will have a carbon up here, carbon up here and uh, it, it comes from hydrogen. So, thalic acid by hydrogen so, and the, uh, many of you know thalazides are pretty useful. Uh, this uh, luminol, have you heard of the term lumin, l, l, luminol? How many of you heard of, uh, have you heard of luminol? And it is a very important molecule, you can do it in the lab. I say nitro uh, corresponding, uh, I, I, I mean I roughly remember uh, it said that it is obtained from the corresponding thalic anhydride and I say nitro is somewhere here, I say nitro. Why it is luminol? Because if you tautomerize it be with hydroxy here and hydroxy here. If you treat with hydrogen peroxide uh, uh, and little bit of iron, uh, you know what happens? It is an example of chemiluminescence chemiluminescence so you can see the light the fluorescence okay the, you can do it at least uh, i have done it uh, once when i was a graduate student uh, okay uh, it it persists for at least a half a minute or a minute you can see the uh, nice luminescence okay and um, so uh, and then this one uh, what is the name uh, okay the, uh, this is a uh, queen oxaline Queen of saline, okay. And this one uh, has a very similar name, Queen Jolene. Queen Jolene, okay. I don't know how to remember this one, but I can see that thalazine because we have two carbons here like thalic acid, and Queen Jolene. It has a uh, way to remember. This portion comes from oxalic acid. Uh, the, the, these two carbons here, so that way you can remember that it actually it comes as uh, Queen Jolene. So, that ox come from probably there and uh, 
So, but uh, today we will be talking about uh, just an, an, as an example of the polyheteroatomic uh, this uh, synolins. Synolins, of course, will have the one two nitrogens of this kind, and uh, as usual, they are found in many uh, compounds uh, with the anti-tumor properties. And then there are some semiconducting material. For example, uh, the one I am writing now. Um, uh, has nice uh, n type semiconducting properties uh, this one yeah, so you have lot of phenyl here and there a lot of phenyls okay uh, so then of course synolin means you have to have nitrogen so two nitrogen one two nitrogen here and then phenyl up here. it's a symmetrical one it's a symmetrical one linked with a benzene ring system you do not have to write just I mean see most of the aromatic compounds will have some material properties opti electron optical properties opto electronic properties okay, uh, or conducting uh, uh, nature. Uh, so, uh, now how to make our, our case is how to make it one of the classical ways to uh, get into this sort of or uh, access this sort of material is an, uh, ring expansion of indole again uh, in indole. Now, if you treat this with NH2Cl and nitrobenzene in the presence of heat, I think uh, this is the, this is the first step, and this is second step, and you can guess what happened. Uh, it first forms this again uh, this uh, N nitro so uh, sorry N amino, right? N amino, and then the, like uh, this is in inamine part. So inamine part would uh, uh, so the, the inamine part and then that would hydrolyze to uh, this hydrazine. So, this is basically one way of uh, making the like the previous example is an hydrazine here and this is this aldehyde is aldehyde. Then uh, that uh, shift stress formation aromatizations all these things eventually will give you the synodin. So, this is one way of uh, doing it. The other way uh, is <coughs> The other way is, uh, could be this is quite quite interesting. What are the other possibilities? Uh, again, is uh, di substituted aniline derivative. So, or benzene derivative. Uh, you take uh, this one. Then you have to have necessary carbon. That's it. So, what is the linkage here? Uh, that would permit um, the formation of the synolial nucleus. Uh, you see, you have to have two carbons and little bit of this unsaturation because to comply with the oxidation level of the final product, right? And in this case. It is this uh, alkyl. See, throughout the heterocyclic chemistry, if we have a amine and a carbonyl, and if we do not have a carbonyl, then you substitute the carbonyl with an alkyl precursor. This is the quickest way of thinking uh, heterocyclic synthesis. Okay. Now, uh, this is uh, so if this compound is treated with uh, let us say nitrous acid and maybe I mean let us say nitrous acid and uh, uh, heat probably. Uh, then quite interestingly, uh, so what you will expect, you will expect right, uh, so digenium salt and then uh, although apparently these two are quite far apart, but it would uh, cyclize to uh, this nucleus. So, that means plus sign is here this R nitrogen and this and depending on this uh, your reaction uh, depending on the reaction uh, condition uh, you can get OH here, but in this case you will be getting OH uh, in this uh, OH and if you have a concentrated um, nucleophile like chlorine, bromine, iodine. So, you can also have incorporation of uh, this halogen here in the presence of the carbonium ion. So, this is these are the two ways of doing it. But the uh, recent ones, recent one could be just um, I think uh, recent uh, I do not have the reference, but it is uh, published somewhere between uh, 2010 and 2012. Uh, it is uh, quite interesting. Uh, you, you start from this azo compound. So, azo compound, all of us know azo compounds. Uh, are useful as what? Dyes, what else? Basically, are dyes in food dyes also. Most of the food dyes available in the market, they are actually azo compounds. Azo compounds. 
So, now if you treat this uh, with an alkyne di substituted alkyne let us R here and uh, in the presence of a uh, rhodium catalyst. In this case the rhodium catalyst is rhodium uh, Cl2 dichloride and then uh, Cp star. Cp star this is uh, believed to be in dimeric state and this, this is catalyst. Then equivalent amount of oxygen is required often I think many of you know uh, the one of the cupric acid is one of the I mean uh, cheapest or rather cheap oxidizing agents and then uh, something else. So, this is see all these organometallic chemistry would involve a lot of actually optimization studies formulations, but if you know the little bit of the mechanism, if you know the mechanism you can come up with the right combinations. I mean uh, a non chemist can also do. So, chemistry is something like this you know a non chemist can also do something something, but they will have to just uh, do trial and error but we do little bit of uh, intelligently right judiciously. So, we use little um, uh, intelligent guess. Uh, so, uh, and what is the intelligent guess? Uh, one this uh, the whole reaction conditions and the reagent conditions are missing one of the reagents and can you guess what could be the reagent? Okay. Essential product is uh, now the silonials right. So, here is in R here R here. Uh, what could be the missing reagent? I mean I have shown this hydrogen up here. So, this hydrogen this hydrogen has to be abstracted. Organometallic chemist people say that it is uh, CH activation. See, uh, see this is a very popular term these days. If you can do a CH activation you are doing something great. Okay. But uh, uh, big, uh, I am an organic chemist, so what I look at, I look at as a uh, simple electrophilic substitution reaction, Friedel-Crafts reactions, only but with the metal now. So rhodium, you have a chloride. Friedel-Crafts reaction, you have alkyl chloride. In this case, you have a rhodium chloride. So, and uh, but in this alkyl chloride can be activated by aluminium chloride, but rhodium chloride can be activated by gas. No gas. Silver tetrafluoride. All of us know it can pull the chlorine. The silver has a strong affinity towards chlorine and halogens. So, it pulls the chlorine so rhodium plus that means, uh, uh, eventually what you will be getting here you will be, uh, uh, as an intermediate you will be getting an uh, organo rhodium right. Organo rhodium and that would be uh, that would be having a uh, halogen here right, but uh, then there you have a second nitrogen that can also displace the intramolecularly. So, one halogen is replaced by benzene nucleus, other halogen is replaced by nitrogen and then what is left? Cp star, Cp star left. So, this is this intermediate. Now, you have an organometallic rhodium complex, then all of us know that um, uh, you have organometallics, you have the pi x, okay. uh, so that is by pi complex formation. Then once you have pi complex formation, oxidative addition, reductive elimination, so all these processes would uh, proceed. Then eventually you have cupric acid that would oxidize the rhodium again, and then you will uh, enter into the catalytic cycle. So eventually you will get to this one, and this is a pretty general one. General one, actually, what happens uh, in between uh, when the reaction is over, uh, or rather uh, towards the penultimate stage? So uh, what you will be getting here. R and this and this is sinolinium salt, sinolinium salt here, sinolinium salt because you have a tertiary butyl group. Then all of us know this tertiary butyl groups are because of the carbonium stability it will be lost as a isobutylene, isobutylene or if you have let us say we do not have the enough chloride. chloride so, uh, you will have uh, if you have enough chloride you will have obtained tertiary butyl chloride right. So, that means you will get the sinolinium. Now, um, how do you know this is the mechanism operating very simple uh, very simple uh, to test this uh, what you can do uh, just uh, uh, change the substrate change the substrate 
here you will have uh, just take uh, instead of the tertiary butyl group you take phenyl and the reaction same reaction conditions same reaction conditions right. So, uh, what you would be expecting now synonymium salt here you will be expecting synonymium salt but the phenyl group here that is it and the corresponding the counter ion in this case there may be the, the set of forward. Okay. And this is R here, R here, R here. So, this is a kind of test that means the tertiary that selenium salt is first formed and then separately in one case if you have a methyl for example, uh, if you have very similar compound with methyl here then uh, you will be getting the corresponding um, uh, methyl salt right rest remains as it is and you will get this uh, methyl salt here, but uh, and that can be simply I think uh, oh, just heated with pyridine at 140 degree centigrade. So, you can get the demethylation done and uh, so pyridine attacking this methyl group here neutralizing the nitrogen. So, you will get the uh, free uh, synolines, free synolines. So, these are uh, pretty useful one That's actually uh, this work is pattern after a uh, scientist name uh, many of you probably know any of you have heard of this the person Fagnau is a Canadian scientist organic chemist and very unfortunate very unfortunate he died at the age of 35 he published so many Jack's paper before 35 and people are thinking that he would be a really good scientist, but he died at the age of 35 or 40 maybe below 40 for sure be, be out of because of any, anybody knows this story swine flu have you heard of swine flu tummy flu swine flu you know swine flu as a few years ago in the, it was in the news swine flu ok. And um, so, let us uh, talk about a bit of uh, purine bit of purine. So, purine let us say how do you uh, let us say uh, purine all of us know it is an imidazole and pyrimidine. We have to remember also the numbering right we have to uh, uh, by the way you have to at least purine uh, pyridine you can forget about, but pyridine, uh, purine you have to remember the, uh, for pyridine uh, sorry for purine you have to remember the uh, numbering system and so how can you make it and what is the starting point. The starting point here, if you remember, this num this is one, this is two. Uh, you have to look at two car uh, no, C two, uh, uh, C two and C eight. What does it tell you? So th this is how you actually, whenever you start with an heterocyclic molecule, you have to uh, you have to look at the structural features first. Structural features. Do you see any pattern? Do you see any similarity? Do you see do you, do you similar uh, see any similarity between uh, the C2 carbon and an existing uh, starting material or other popular starting material? If you remember in the first few classes in organic synthesis, I talk about only oxidation reduction and this thing that thing. And at the end of fourth year sample, so only we have learned oxidation reduction, that is fine, but that is a very important guideline though, a very powerful guideline for any synthetic chemist. Okay. So, do you see any similarity between the C2 carbon and with any uh, particular starting material? Uh, let us say what are the starting material you can think of? Methanol, uh, ethanol, one carbon right, one carbon synthon, one carbon synthon, so called synthon, methanol, uh, formaldehyde, formic acid all these things right. And all, all these actually, but if you see at C2 actually it has some resemblance with formic acid right or formaldehyde formic acid. If you just take it out it take because uh, see basically this one uh, instead of nitrogen you put oxygen here in this case uh, so it is formic sorry it is formic acid formic acid the, uh, take this carbon out uh, instead of the nitrogen you put oxygen here and the, uh, in the place of oxygen nitrogen you put this here. So, that means uh, the C 2 matches the oxidation level of formic acid. And similarly, C8 also uh, matches the level of uh, oxidation level of the formic acid. That means one of the uh, important starting materials could be 
that means you have a CH up here and the two heteroatoms. Okay. So, this can be uh, obtained from formic acid or the corresponding derivatives, this also can be formic acid derivative. And by the way, historically, if you see, uh, uh, if you take um, formamide, and I did not get this, I mean, you have maybe you have to work it out, uh, you can get you just simply heat it, you get the purine. It is a nice way of uh, looking at this uh, purine synthesis. The other approaches could be there are two approaches. Now, you can uh, let us say there are uh, two uh, approaches. Um, uh, one could be just uh, you start with the imidazole, right? Imidazole and, uh, and the corresponding uh, disubstituted imidazole, sorry, disubstituted imidazole. The other could be disubstituted uh, pyrimidine, that is it. So, these are the two ways, these are the two ways. Now, how do you uh, in real life how do you do? Let us say if you uh, treat with simply treat with acetic anhydride, uh, acetic anhydride um, uh, you will get uh, it is a methyl substituted uh, purine and mechanistically basically shifts base condensation. Uh, so, likewise I will give you an example up here. Uh, let us say uh, in this case sorry uh, in this case it should be if you break this it would be an H 2 here and this one could be an like this right. Uh, uh, okay. And to uh, give another example I think uh, just quickly I, I just uh, write uh, example on the, this uh, system uh, you take uh, imidazole uh, and let us say if you have um, cyano here and then uh, an H2 instead of the I mean there, sorry, I made a mistake here. Uh, this is 5 member ring and double bond up here. And then, uh, of course, what I said C2 is equivalent to uh, formic acid. In this case, if you use for formamide, so you will get the substituted purine, right. You have an extra amine group, extra amine group that would uh, incorporate one NH2 group here, NH2 group here, uh, okay, uh, okay, this sorry, uh, this I think we made a mistake somewhere here, oh, okay, oh, the, sorry, I think the study material is something wrong, just correct the study material, this should be I mean here and the methyl group here. So, you have a methyl group, the nitrogen and this. Basically, I mean, so uh, easy to remember, there are two ways to remember. Uh, you start with imidazole 1 and this, this and either you break at uh, in fact, uh, these days you know if uh, you can also come up with this uh, starting metal very easily. How do you just uh, write the structure in chem draw, uh, use delete, once you put delete automatically you will generate this sort of structures. Okay. So, that is uh, and last uh, item that is to be talked about uh, let us say uh, I will write the structure. Right, you have to tell me uh, the name. The structure, uh, uh, the new heterocyclic nucleus that is here is uh, NH2. What is the heterocyclic nucleus? The way I have written, and you guess to start with, I have told you uh, in the very first slide uh, what is the heterocycle? Huh? Terrine, terrine, it is called terrine, right. It is called terrine, fine. Okay. So, terrine, and then uh, it has a name. I think many of you have studied uh, medicinal chemistry or uh, PABA, right. PABA, para amino benzoic acid, and then uh, this one, uh, let us see how many of you know this amino acid. Glutamic acid. So, glutam I think all of you know glutamic acid, right? Okay. And so, that means you have three important components. And what is the name of the whole molecule? Folic acid. And what is it used for? Huh? Actually, um, it's very um, vitamin is very important actually. Uh, uh, B12 or B, B complex? B complex. Huh? B9, okay, fine. 
but uh, but if you have this deficiency of folic acid actually uh, you will have lot of complications. I mean I have a list I think I can tell you I can read out uh, it, uh, it can lead to diarrhea, it can lead to anemia, it can lead to shortness of breath you know no, no, it is important though important many of you probably do not know, but uh, at least uh, I had been benefited because of oh, I mean uh, uh, prescription by a doctor. Okay? And uh, I was having a deficiency of vitamin D, but uh, many doctors said no you have uh, blood, uh, blood sugar. Then one skin specialist said no uh, uh, you might be having a vitamin D deficiency. I was treated uh, I mean uh, I, I, I recovered in just in a week's time while I suffered for 2 years before that. Okay? So, that means the general I mean, important area okay, how do you make it? So, now, now uh, how do you make it? Once again um, it is uh, you just uh, look at the structure here. So, uh, terrine nucleus is uh, obtainable uh, from the corresponding amine and so uh, like say in this case diamine here right and this other portion all of us know uh, this is a basically a peptide derivative we can say uh, peptide, de peptide derivative. Uh, so, you have all these things and this is uh, amine here and in the middle you can see now we are organic chemist we can think about right, uh, instead of, but, but you have to differentiate these two nitrogens. Uh, these two, see when you break down this folic acid uh, you will have it uh, this nitrogen and this nitrogen between the two uh, if you just um, uh, apply your uh, nucleophilicity knowledge, acidity knowledge all these the resonance all these things one of them is more nucleophilic which one is more nucleophilic? Guess between the two underlined uh, NH2 group, top or bottom one? Top or bottom? Of course, answer could be either top or bottom, but <laughs> uh, uh, what do you see here, uh, right? So, that means the lone pair is now directed towards the carbonyl, that means this is not available, the top one is available. So, you put a carbonyl there, that is it, carbonyl there, CH2Cl and then, but uh, you have to differentiate here also. How do you differentiate? Put two carbon, uh, two, car, two chlorine atoms. All of us know gem chlorine is equivalent to an aldehyde. So, that way uh, just that is it. And by the way, this reaction is so easy to carry out, uh, just um, pH, uh, pH uh, 4, pH 4 to 5. And this is an antioxidant, you can say uh, because it stops the oxidation sodium bisulfide. Just uh, heat it, you get folic acid. So, that means with proper uh, design, one can, uh, uh, one can um, do this folic acid uh, synthesis very easily. And the last one, last one, this is an important topic though, uh, many of you probably uh, have heard of flavin. Right? What is it? Flavin is again a flavin is again a pteridine derivative. Pteridine derivative. Pteridine derivative. So it's a benzo pteridine derivative. Okay, and that means it is uh, a nitrogen of here. That means okay. And then this, this portion is basically uh, pteridine derivative, this NH here carbonyl and then this and I am just writing only one specific one because this is pretty useful. Uh, so, uh, this, uh, this is chloride minus, this has been prepared in a very recently, uh, very, uh, very recently. Okay. And what is used for? So, actually it is a nice catalyst for oxidation. Suppose you begin with an aldehyde, begin with an aldehyde. So, you use this cat that means it is a catalytic amount and what else I mean uh, to get to the uh, carboxylic acid and it has been uh, applied to many many uh, uh, compounds, many many compounds. Okay, this this is published in uh, so it's called flavin catalyzed uh, oxidation. So it's a kind of a green catalyst. We have hydrogen peroxide, which is green reagent. There is no metal here, right? 
there is no, no metal here uh, this has been published in 2012 there are other papers but the uh, latest one is uh, this one. So, you can um, go to it and see it is uh, quite interesting uh, quite interesting. And so, what you have to do? You have to just use uh, 1.5 equivalent of hydrogen peroxide, not much. 1.5 equivalent of hydrogen peroxide, and probably you have to heat it at some temperature. Oh, yes, uh, you have to heat it at uh, 85 degree centigrade, and the catalyst amount that is required is very little. Uh, only uh, this one. Okay, um, uh, only uh, 2.5 mole percent. So you can uh, go to this. And what is the uh, intermediate? Intermediate is uh, uh, basically uh, a, I think I will just write only the part structure hydrogen peroxide uh, undergoes nucleophilic addition first. Nucleophilic addition, uh, nucleophilic addition uh, first to get this hydroperoxide. hydroperoxide. Now, this hydroperoxide uh, goes to re, uh, react with aldehyde, aldehyde to form uh, hemi acetal. So, hydrogen peroxide and let us say R prime, R prime, okay. that means this one. So, R, the, this portion is R prime and then all of us know that uh, under this uh, hydro, uh, since peroxy linkages are uh, weak uh, linkages. So, uh, it uh, removes this. Uh, so, oxidation done again. Okay. And then it then it can be under the reaction conditions it can be re recycled to the corresponding chloride and the reaction condition that is basically this uh, uh, HCl. And how to but our topic this so is a nice example of this an example of heterocycling used as a and, and as, an, uh, as a catalyst for the oxidation of uh, um, uh, organic compounds. And how to make it uh, again uh, do the simpli uh, simplifications you start from uh, alloxen actually this portion uh, this portion actually comes from uh, alloxen I think so uh, let us say yes uh, alloxen alloxen actually uh, it comes from barbituric acid or barbituric acid some people say barbituric acid what is barbituric acid anybody knows how do you make it barbituric acid is a condensation product of diethyl malonate and urea. urea. So, if you oxidize that, uh, if you oxidize, oxidize with uh, chromium trioxide, you will go to this compound, you will go to this compound. Okay. Uh, so, I think uh, that is all about uh, we have to talk about. So, um, what are the things uh, you have to remember though? Summary, summary of the class. Uh, first of all, you have to remember the structure of the important nucleus. Uh, inazole is easy to remember because 1 to nitrogen. So, likewise quinolines, quinoxolines, quinolines all these things they are pretty typical and pretty well known heterocyclic molecules. Then between the purine and uh, pteridine uh, you have to remember the at least the numbering system of the purine because it, uh, it occurs in many many places right all these nucleic acid most of the nucleic acid bases will have purine nucleus. Okay. Pteridine is important because of folic acid and what else? Uh, and the, the presence in the anti cancer drug methotrexate, and of course, uh, pteridine also is found in flavins, right? Flavins, and then uh, you have to make a difference between flavin and flavon, though. There is a, uh, there is a very uh, commonly used word called flavon. How many of you know what is flavon? Flavon, F L O V O N E. Green tea, people say green tea is having flavon nucleus. Anybody knows what is chromon? Is chromon is uh, something like this. And chromon, it could be of many kinds, right? Chromons, it can be of many kinds, like this, right? Flavon is nothing but. If I, I, I have forgotten, okay. I think it is in two position, or three. Uh, that uh, it may be on this side also. Sorry, okay. It is a phenyl chromon, phenyl chromon, they are flavon. Okay, pretty 